Welcome. Today we're going to learn all about butterfly gardening, but first I have a question for you. How many of you would like to eat all you want, sleep for a couple of weeks, and then wake up beautiful? Yeah, me too, especially that sleep part. But that is the life of a butterfly. So let's see what it takes to get them all to come to your garden. To make your garden perfect for butterflies, we first need to talk about location. We want a nice sunny area for butterflies. They're only active when the temperatures are above 75 or 80 degrees, so they want to be out in the sun. That helps them control their uh, body temperature and lets the blood flow through their wings. So not only do we want a sunny location, but you want to pick the wildest area in your yard. I realize that you and your HOA may love a perfectly manicured lawn and landscape, but butterflies love to have a little bit of a wild area. If you back up to a nature or conservation area, that's perfect. You'll probably find lots of butterflies, but sometimes you have to do what you can to make the area a little less than perfect for butterflies. You also want to make sure that there is some water nearby for the butterflies. But butterflies themselves need a place to get a little drink. It's a, a behavior called puddling, where they'll find wet mud or wet rocks, and they'll land on them and pull nutrients out of that wet soil. So you want to have some space in your butterfly garden to allow them to do that. So I hate to break it to you, but butterflies are bugs. And so a really important consideration for your butterfly garden is pest control. And not pest control in your butterfly garden. I know you probably would shy away from using pesticides in your butterfly garden, but what are you using for the rest of your house and for your lawn? So it's really important to think about what's being sprayed to keep your grass uh, healthy or even for termites on your home. Place the butterfly garden as far away as possible from where other pesticides may be sprayed because they can be harmful to the little caterpillars and butterflies as well. Now we want to figure out what plants we're going to put in that butterfly garden. And the way we're going to think through it is we're going to follow the life cycle of a butterfly. We're going to start with the adult butterflies. Then adults need to lay eggs, so we're going to figure out what plants will help those butterflies find somewhere to lay their eggs. The eggs hatch into caterpillars. We need something for them to eat. And then the caterpillars become a chrysalis, and we need somewhere to shelter them while they go through that final transformation. For our adult butterflies, we want to pick some beautiful nectar plants for them to feed on. Now, butterflies as adults are not particularly picky. They will flutter around and find all different types of flowers. Some of our favorite nectar plants are going to be pentas, red pentas especially, one of our favorites. Salvias, lantanas, um, cigar flowers, it's a vermilionaire kufi is a variety of that one that's really great for butterflies. And you notice that a lot of the flowers we select are in the warm color family, red, orange, and yellow. That is particularly attractive to adult butterflies. So make sure that you have a nice variety of different sized flowers and you'll find all sorts of adult butterflies making your garden their home. So when you're talking about location, I said to pick a wild area for your butterfly garden. That would be the best place for butterflies um, to make their home. And in this case, for the adult butterflies, we do want to make sure that we have somewhere for them to take shelter. They do sleep at night, so they'll go hang in a tree or a large bush. So just make sure that there's somewhere for them to go. If all that's in your garden is a few nectar flowers and nothing else, the butterflies are going to move on and they're going to find some place to shelter. Now that we've gotten the adult butterflies to our garden, we need somewhere for the cycle to continue, somewhere for them to lay their eggs. So now we're going to pick host plants, and this is where butterflies get really picky. Each type of butterfly lays its eggs on one type or one family of plants. So let's see which host plants are good for some of the common butterflies in our area. Florida has over 170 verified species of butterflies. That's lots and lots of really cool butterflies in our area. And over 40 of those are unique to our state. So we've got lots of opportunities to see butterflies. One of the most common and most popular butterflies is of course the monarch. We see those a lot quite early in the season. Their host plant is milkweed. They only lay their eggs and the caterpillars only feed on plants in the milkweed family. Another common butterfly in our area is the black swallowtail. It feeds on, the caterpillar feeds on plants in the carrot family. So that's going to be some common herbs like dill, fennel, parsley, and rue. Another swallowtail butterfly that we see in our area is the giant swallowtail. Beautiful butterfly, about the size of a saucer. In a bright yellow underside, it lays its eggs on citrus trees. And it's a really cool caterpillar because it camouflages really well. You walk by this tree and you'll see little bird droppings on a citrus tree. Sometimes it is actually the caterpillar. If you have some room for vines in your butterfly garden, you can plant a passion vine. 
And if you plant it in the sun, you'll find Gulf fritillary butterflies laying their eggs on it. If you plant in the shade, you'll find our state butterfly, the zebra longwing, laying its eggs on passion vine in the shade. If you also have room for a really fast growing vine, plant the Dutchman's pipe vine. That's going to be the host for both the polydamus and the pipe vine swallowtail butterfly, which are just smaller uh, blackish and a little bit of blue to them uh, in terms of color. So real pretty butterfly flies. And finally, the sulfur butterflies. F fast flying little butterflies are a solid yellow color, real pretty. There's lots of different types of those. Lay they lay their eggs on plants in the Senna family, so things like our cassia plants. So once your caterpillars have fed for about those two weeks, they'll be nice and plump and they'll look like they are ready to take a little nap. And so they're going to head off to form their chrysalis. And now I say they go, they're going to head off. 99% of the time, caterpillars will not form their chrysalis on the host plants they were feeding on. Not always, but most of the time, they're going to uh, go pretty far looking for a safe, secure spot. So this again goes to making your garden just a little bit on the wild side. Make sure that there's some shrubs, some trees, something for them to find a safe, secure place to make their chrysalis on so that they can continue to hang around your garden. There you have it. Butterfly gardening is beautiful and it's easy. Start with nectar plants in a bright sunny area to bring adults to your garden and then find the right host plants for the butterfly types that you see so that they can lay their eggs, feed as caterpillars, and remain in your garden for you to enjoy. Have fun gardening!